everybody, it's Star the Flippin' Hippo, and welcome back to our YouTube channel. We went sourcing this weekend, a little bit less than we wanted to. We did go to our local thrift store, um, our little honey pot, as we like to call it. They have 99 cents Saturday. And then we were going to go to the Goodwills today, which is Sunday, uh, for their 99 cent day. However, we woke up this morning to a debacle. We had a hideous thing happen to our eBay store. We still don't know how it happened. Um, but our prices were all jacked up. And the last time I bulk edited anything in our store was last Monday, right when the shipping costs went up across the board uh, from the USPS and I had gone in and bulk edited everything 500 at a time up by like 30 to 50 cents just to offset the increased shipping charges uh, because we offer free shipping on all of our first class items and we wanted to cover that so I had done that on Monday and it was only like a 30 to 50 cent increase but for some reason this morning when we woke up we had ridiculous prices in our store. Typically on the weekends, we'll have um, 30 to 40 items sell. This weekend, uh, by Saturday night, we had sold seven. And when we woke up this morning, we had no new offers and nothing had sold overnight. Like we were stale at seven items sold no best offers, nothing came in. And so we did actually go in the back end of the store and kind of look through to see what was going on, like if there was something that we could see and fix. And of course, there it was, we found it. For instance, there was a pair of True Religion jeans that I'm asking 50 for, and they were listed at $94. Um, we had several shirts that we were asking 12 for or 15 for. They were listed at like 30 and 40 dollars. It was it was arbitrary. It wasn't every item in the store, but there was no rhyme or reason to it either. It did not make sense. There was like some jeans and some shirts and some men's clothes and some women's clothes, but a lot of our items, at least 60 to 70 percent, had their prices hiked up and increased uh, pretty high and I thought well maybe I did something when I bulk edited that we just haven't noticed until now because our sales actually were slow this week they were a lot slower than normal we typically sell 10 to 15 items a day this week we had we were actually stuck at six a day like consecutively three days in a row and then we broke the streak on Thursday and sold seven and then Friday we had 11 packages go out and so at that time as the week went by and our sales increased and by Friday we we broke the the curse so to speak and we had 11 items go out we thought well maybe it was just the shipping increase um, we had heard that there were a lot of glitches in the back end of eBay because of the shipping increase and we know we raised our prices a little and maybe people were still getting used to the higher prices so that's you know we thought that was why sales were slow but when you only sell seven things from Friday at 3 p.m. until Sunday morning, something's wrong. So we discovered all these prices. We still can't figure it out. We think that something glitched. Maybe it was the eBay goblins. Um, and then I had like an idea, well, what if, you know, when you bulk edit, you can do 500 at a time. And we have close to 2,000 listings. So ours is like you do a chunk of 1 to 500 and 500 and 1 to 9.99 and so on. And it was just enough items in our store that I thought, well, maybe on one of the chunks I screwed up. And instead of increasing 50%, or sorry, instead of increasing 50 cents, what if I actually increase 50%? Um, because I am in the habit of doing percentages when we do our unsolds I bulk edit and lower like five percent and I'm in the habit of doing that so I thought well, what if on one of the four chunks that I edited for sh you know to increase for the shipping what if I accidentally pushed percent instead of cents but then we did the math and it didn't quite add up on some of the items it made sense some it didn't 
Um, bottom line, we'll probably never know what happened. It's just that we woke up and prices on more than half of what we have on our store were incredibly high, jacked, sky high, and even with the 25% sale that we were running, there was no way in hell that anybody was going to buy it. Nobody's going to buy it. Not even Miss Me Jeans for $95 um, used. So we decided that fixing this was more important than more sourcing. We need sales, obviously, and we need activity in our store, but we need our prices to be correct. And in order for us to make sales and be seen in the searches, we need to get this fixed. And that was like priority number one we put everything else aside i mean we actually like legitimately came up to the ebay room the office this morning in our pajamas with our cups of coffee and sat down and just started going category by category um he was on his phone i work on the laptop and we just went down the list category by category and fixed all the prices in our store we actually were dismayed we thought it was going to take all day and uh into dinner time and it actually we were done by one we started around 9 30 so yeah we sleep in um so it, it didn't take as long as we thought and actually keith had taken a break at one point to go eat um he took like 20 30 minutes to go downstairs and eat lunch i kept working i had a banana and a granola bar at the desk and kept going because I didn't want to be on this all day but we did finish by one all of our prices were fixed we got a sale running in the store again and like magic we immediately started making sales and getting offers so I mean we were silent all Saturday night and all Sunday morning and then as soon as all the prices were fixed and we had a sale going cha-ching 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 just like magic best offers coming in and we're making our sales again so hopefully before we do shipping tomorrow uh, we do ours at three. Hopefully we will get enough sales in uh, from fixing the issue to make up for the slow first half of the weekend. Um, so I thought maybe we, we would end up going shopping for a little while today and maybe going at least to the, the Goodwill that's closest to us. But, you know, we have a lot of clothes over across the hall. Um, waiting to be listed, waiting to be washed. We have uh, a pile behind me that's waiting to be photographed. And we both have extra photos of about 20 items that we took um, to stockpile for listing. So we are just not, we just decided we weren't going to Goodwills this week and we're going to um, work on what we already have plus what we got at our local honey pot yesterday. And we actually have a pretty good pile. I, I don't want to call it the death pile because it's not something we're avoiding. It's just a pile that we've been building and uh, living in the north during the winter. We thought it was kind of a good idea to stockpile. It's not a death pile. It's a stockpile. We have a lot of extra stuff laying around here in case there was ever a weekend that we were snowed in and couldn't get out to source. So we're just going to work off of that. But I'm going to go ahead and um let you guys see the uh, little bit of the ride along I got yesterday when we went to our local thrift and we did try Ross it has been all over Instagram all week that Ross is having this amazing sale and I see all these resellers with their giant hauls and their pictures of stuff they're finding for 49 cents and $1.99 and two forty-nine, and nah, not here you guys are Ross either was already sold out of all the really good clearance or our Ross just sucks and doesn't run clearances that low. I'm hey guys, it is Saturday the 27th of January. We are on our way to source at our local Honey Pot Surf store. It is 99 cents day there and it is a balmy 46 degrees out in Pittsburgh today. So we're excited that it's warm. Let's go see what we can find. Hey guys, so we finished up at our local honey pot thrift store and I was going to kind of give you a shot of the stuff in the trunk. However, due to the asinine way people park in cities, i.e. street parking, which we don't have in Arizona where I'm from and it drives me insane, we had to park blocks and blocks away and then I left Keith on a street corner with these great big garbage bags full of clothes, like a 
homeless person he stood there and waited for me to come pick him up and I was in a no parking zone and he threw them in the trunk and we took off we are now in a shopping center and I was going to show you some of the stuff but it's now raining we're gonna go in here to Ross we heard there's a sale here um, I think we're late to the party I think the sales been going on for about a week already and then we might head over to um, Walmart and some other stores here in the shopping center Trying to do a little retail arbitrage and get our Amazon off the ground. So, even on sale, the lowest, lowest thing I'm seeing is like $25. And behind me is what we've missed out on. See the empty rack? Now we're in the men's. They seem to have a fuller rack of clearance, but the prices aren't much better. If you're shopping for yourself, these are fantastic prices, but we're trying to be flipping. Flipping to pay the bills. See, this one's kind of empty. So we're gonna go check out the shoes. Ross was a total bust. Most of the clearance racks were completely <clears throat> emptied. And what was left, even on clearance, the cheapest thing we found was um, like $15. Keith had one moment of excitement. He found a tank top for 49 cents, but he pulled it off the rack and he had it had candy stuck to it. He said he felt like he was in a thrift store for a minute. So it is still raining a little bit. I don't know if we're gonna head over to Walmart now um, or just go home, but I'm gonna show you the trunk real quick. So this is the trunk. We ended up with uh, four garbage bags full from our little honey pot thrift store. We mostly found bread and butter there. I did find my very first Pendleton, and then I found my very second Pendleton. So we'll highlight those later when we show you the haul. Hey guys, we are back home. We're parked in front of our house. Before we unload the trunk and go inside, can we just take a minute to talk about what I just saw at a stoplight? Can we just talk about this oh my god so this woman first of all I was staring at her in mortification for the duration of the red light which was a pretty long red light I would say three to four minutes maybe longer it felt like longer I'm staring at this woman I'm horrified I think I might vomit she never once noticed. She's, you know, busy, which we're going to talk about. I'm going to show you what she did. But she's in her own world doing this disgusting thing at a stoplight with other cars around her and people all around her. And she didn't notice anyone looking at her. She used every single finger. Every single finger. She sat at the stoplight and proceeded to pick and look and pick and look and pick and then dig and dig and dig and look and when this hand was apparently full of boogers and snot and there was no more room she proceeded to involve the other hand and dig and look and pick and look until all apparently of her fingers were now covered in snot and boogers because she just kept looking like it was like she was digging gold or something interesting out of her nose that she was looking at and then as if picking a total of 10 times because she was using her thumbs wasn't enough she did a Kentucky nose blow into her hand and then she went into the other hand then she looked she must have been happy with what she blew into her hands because then she did this. And not one time did she glance 
around her to see if anybody else was looking. Not one time did she even look up. I don't even know if she was waiting or looking at the stoplight to see when it was red anymore. Like, she was in her own world. She was in the nose-picking zone. She was in the zone. She did not notice the world around her. She picked, and she looked, and then she blew, and then she looked, and she did this. And kept looking like you remember when you were a kid and you'd get that rubber cement or the elmer's glue in school and you would put it all over your hand and you would do this until it all came off i think that's what she was doing because it's I, I don't know but she kept rubbing and looking and then when she was finally happy with whatever was going on her hands there was no wipe on the shirt there was no wipe on the pants it was just and then her hands went on her wheel so this woman's driving around with a booger-coated, snot-encrusted wheel and disgustingness all over her hands, and she gave... She didn't care. She was just... Ugh. Well, I just wanted to take a second because I needed to talk about this because I saw it happen. I watched it go down, and I'm truly disgusted. We're going to take our stuff inside. Hey, guys. So, a lot of what Keith found yesterday was new with tags. Uh, he lucked out. He found, like, a lot of really great stuff that was new with tags. So, a lot of what we brought home, he was able to take right out of the bags, put on the mannequins, get photos of, and get listed, and get it up. There were a couple of items that we really, really wanted to get up, like, really soon. And I'm going to tell you one in a minute, and you're going to understand when you see it. Uh, so we did a load of laundry real quick yesterday, um, just for really this one item. Um, he did list like 20 things out of that, and then we got a lot of the new tags up. But there was one item we just had to get up, and I'm going to show you that last. It is already listed. A lot of what we got is already up in the store. I have a small pile here I want to share with you. Um, that still has the tags on it because these are things I pulled aside that I really wanted for my haul video. So, actually, I need to go grab the receipt. You guys, hang tight. Okay, I'm back. Um, <clears throat> not that any time has passed for you guys due to the magic of editing. Um, I just wanted to show you on our receipt, we got a total of 58 items and we paid $57.00 and 42 cents which comes out to just under 99 cents per item their uh, yellow tags were 99 cents yesterday and then I got a couple of plushies that I found that were like 69 cents and 79 cents okay so we'll start with the jeans um, we got 58 items I've pulled three maybe six here to show you um, so this is just a small portion of what we did get. Just highlighting my favorite things, my favorite finds. Yellow tag, it was 99 cents. These are BKE buckle jeans. They have the nice pockets on the back and the stitching that's different. I know there's a word for that. I've even used it in my titles, but I'm really having a um, these were 99 cents. There are seven for all mankind. I think they're just your basic run of the mill, seven for all mankind. But for 99 cents, right? Throwing stuff on the floor down here. Uh, again, yellow tag, 99 cents. Lucky brand. So sweet and low, or sorry, sweet and straight. And they have the nice flap button pockets on the back. And believe it or not, I found two pairs of Lucky Jeans yesterday for the 99 cents. Let's see. Oh. These are the dungarees. So those are the those are the pairs of jeans I wanted to highlight. And then we have this, which we were not about to leave this behind. Not when it was 99 cents. 
This is a Brooks Brothers men's bathrobe. Um, it's gray and white. I think this is the herringbone. This is what you call herringbone pattern. It's got a belt. It's just a nice men's lounging robe, but it is Brooks Brothers and it was only 99 cents. It's going to be a pain in the butt to photograph, obviously, because we don't have like a dress form or a full mannequin for our males. But Okay, and then I had uh, first yesterday, I found my very first Pendleton. And then I found my second Pendleton in the same day. Actually, they were right next to each other. I found this one first, and this one was right behind it. They're the same size. Um, they're the same shirt and same style, just different colors. So I'm betting that the same person donated these to the store out of their closet. But they were 99 cents. This is just like a plain, sorry, no depth perception when it comes to this camera being backwards. It's a Pendleton and it's just a plain tan, almost like a baby doll cut t-shirt. And this one was 99 cents as well. See the tag? Sorry. And this is orange, just t-shirt. And like I said, they were together, so I would bet that the same person donated those. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you now so you can see the one the one exciting item that is already listed in the store. This is a Reebok NFL equipment men's jersey. It is just a size large. It is the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Keith and I are nerds, if you hadn't noticed. We're more into our comic book characters, reading books, playing video games, and other nerd things um, than we are sports. We do have enough wherewithal of the world around us to know that the Eagles are going to the Super Bowl this year. And I think the only reason we know that, to be honest, is because we live in Pittsburgh and all of the Steelers fans are very angry and have been very vocal in the past few weeks um, that the other Pennsylvania football team is going to the Super Bowl. Anyway, we got this for 99 cents. It's a nice jersey. It's Reebok. Again, it was 99 cents. We have no idea who this player was until we got it home. We had to look it up. Donovan McNabb, he is a retired player. He no longer plays on the team. But I think that for 99 cents, um, it's still a good grab. I'm sure that there's still a McNabb fan somewhere in the world, and the Eagles are going to the Super Bowl this year. Um, and so, you know, I don't feel too bad even when we got it home and found out that he's a retired player. We paid 99 cents for it. Okay, guys, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor and smash the like button. If you haven't already and you would like to be subscribed to our channel, go ahead and hit subscribe. Help feed a hungry hippo. You can find us at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We are at Flippin' Hippos. Until next time, guys, have a great night.